what's going on guys it's omni arc and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be going over the mightiest governor event in rise of kingdoms now the image that i made on the screen here was heavily inspired by rok.guide i'm not associated with them at all but you know i just figured i would give them a quick shout out because you've probably seen an image similar to this one and that is because of their website now i did want to add to mine uh chandragupta and zenobia because these are two new commanders that we know uh show up for the mightiest governor event and the new archer commanders that were leaked recently one of them is going to be a mightiest governor commander i don't know based on the leaks which one is going to be the mightiest governor commander so i didn't include them here but i wanted to make this video because the mightiest governor commanders that you see on the screen here some of them are the most powerful commanders in the game and for good reason they're going to be hard to get right they're going to be hard to get because you're going to be competing with some of the top players in your kingdom in order to unlock these commanders so what i want to talk about in this video is if you're a free to play or a low spender uh, what strategy should you have when you're going to invest in a mightiest governor win uh, or as high as you can go right ideally you would want you would want to come in first or second and if you're going to do that which of these commanders should you actually plan on fighting for right because not all of them are worth fighting for as a free to play or a low spender now the first thing that i want to point out here is on the top you'll see i have it where it shows the day that the commander first appears in a mightiest governor event and this is important to know because this is static this does not change ever so every new kingdom uh on day 11 julius caesar is the first uh, mightiest governor commander that you can uh, compete for and that you can unlock and get sculptures for right and this is good because if you're in a young kingdom this means that you know exactly when the commander that you want to unlock will be showing up in mightiest governor now they do show up for four separate events right so on day 11 you'll see julius caesar the mightiest governor will run for five days which will take up a bulk of that week the week after that there will be no mightiest governor and then the week after there will be another one right and so after charles martel you'll see that every 56 days begins a new mightiest governor cycle but keep in mind that just because the mightiest governor shows up for the first time doesn't mean you should have to compete for that specific one uh, you could actually wait till the second or third week uh or cycle um and you may actually have a better chance if you plan for the second or third or maybe even the fourth one uh because a lot of those people who really want to get their hands on this uh commander for the first time in that kingdom they're going to be going crazy for that first one so that's important to know but the fact that we know the exact days are important and it's really easy to find out what day your kingdom is on all you have to do is zoom all the way out here you can see we're doing shadow legion if you click the uh, globe in the bottom right corner you will be pulled up to the kingdom list with your continent already open you'll see which continent you're in because it'll have a little symbol next to it the green one is the one that you're playing on right now i have two accounts in this kingdom kingdom 1643 and if you click on that it'll tell you the history so we have 326 days uh have passed and 12 hours 11 minutes 42 seconds what that means is that if we go back to the image that you see over here that means we've passed the initial tamiris release date but we haven't reached attila and in fact if i jump into my events here uh you can go all the way down to the bottom uh, and you'll see that tamiris is going to start her final mightiest governor cycle in five days five hours 32 minutes so what i'm trying to say is that you can predict the exact day and that means that you can save your speed ups and resources to invest at a particular time now the reason that that you want to save up for ideally months and months is because you want to perform as best as possible in the event a single time right you don't want to have to go multiple times and the reason for that is because the sculpture rewards drop off drastically what do i mean by this well first place gets 180 sculptures second place is 60 fewer at 120 and then third place is half that at 60 right and if you go all the way down to sixth place that's half again you're at 30. so the amount that you're going to invest to get first place and the amount that you are going to invest to get fifth place probably isn't that big of a difference right you really don't want to fall past second place in my opinion because think about it 180 sculptures isn't even enough to get you a 5511 now you'll get a 5411 and you'll be really close because uh, you know 10 of these will be used to summon it realistically 
So you'll have 170 left, which means you'll be 20 short from a 5511 legendary commander, which is good, right? But the odds are you're not going to get first place on more than one consecutive uh, um, Mightiest Governor unless you're in a dead kingdom and or you're a huge spender in this game, spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars during Mightiest Governor events. It's just not going to happen. So if you're a free to play player or a low spender, what you can do to combat the idea of spending thousands of dollars is plan your account in advance because you know the exact day that you can uh you can use all of your speed ups and resources and you can go all in on one or maybe two uh mightiest governor events and try to get the most amount of sculptures that you possibly can and again it's crucial you plan in advance because you don't want to assume you'll do well and then walk away with 30 sculptures and you have a two zero 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 legendary which is equally as useless as a 0000 legendary. So with that out of the way, let's look at which of these legendaries should you be interested in as a free to play or a low spender. It's surprisingly few, right? It's surprisingly few. The first three you can skip because you know that you're going to get these commanders from gold keys, right? You can get these commanders. And even if you don't get them from gold keys, you can get them from the daily special bundles. If you are a low spender, you spend at $6 here and there, you can get these commanders from that bundle. Saladin and Constantine are both really good good commanders to get as a free to play or low spender. The reason for this is because you can get a ton of value out of them without having to expertise them. Saladin, you get him to five, 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 one, still a big investment, but he's pretty much done at that point. And then Constantine, you can get him to five, five, one, one, and he's great for Canyon and open field fighting, being a support commander, all that good stuff. Uh, however, these two are also very heavily contested because they're the first two really good, uh, mightiest governor commanders. Now, Fighting for the first Saladin Mightiest Governor probably won't work out for you if you're a free to play or low spender because 177 days, it's it sounds like a long time, but if even if you've been saving that entire time, it's probably gonna be pretty difficult for you to pull out a win. Maybe if you can go for the fourth Saladin Mightiest Governor, maybe that'll be a, a little bit more time for you to save up. I don't know. Um, but Constantine, certainly you could fight for maybe the third or fourth one of him if you've been saving the whole time and uh, you, can, you can have a solid chance at winning. We'll talk about some tips in just a second. To my worst, I'm not that excited about. Attila is probably the most fought for Mightiest Governor, and for good reason. Obviously, Attila to Kid is the best rallying combo, but if you're a free to play or low spender, you're probably not going to be a rally lead in the game regardless. So, honestly, there's not that many other uses for Attila other than that. So, you might as well just save your money because people are going to spend insanely amounts of insane amounts of money trying to go for Attila. Leonidas is also not that exciting to me. Um, it is what it is. Artemisia is a, probably a decently fought for one, but she's mainly for garrisons. Uh, she is an archer commander, but she's mainly for garrisons. And now that we've seen Theodora YSS and Zenobia, I just don't know if we're going to continue to see Artemisia that much to counter Attila Takeda. We might, I might be totally wrong there, but just like we're seeing less Martel Constantine from the high, high, high end old kingdoms, um, you're probably going to start to see less of Artemisia as well. Theodora is also a really great garrison commander, but again, if you're a free to play or low spender, are you really going to be the best choice to be in that garrison? Maybe. Um, and if so, if you really are planning your account that way, then Theodora is probably a really good option for you to go for, but keep in mind, she's also going to be heavily fought for as well, because she's just so good in the garrison, especially by players who have Wu Zetian from uh, winning KVK too. Chandra Gupta is also another good one to go for as a free to play or low spender, because even though you do see some rallies, uh, his rallies tend to not be as good as Attila Takeda. And so really what you're going to be doing with him is uh, using him in the open field as a powerful cavalry commander, which open field fighting is really what you do most of as a free to play or low spender. So perhaps Chandra Gupta is one that you could go for. And then finally, Zenobia insanely powerful in the garrison. Uh, she's probably going to be one of the most fought for mightiest governors, uh, commanders in the entire game. So unless you're really looking for that, or, you know, you could use her as an infantry commander as well. It's probably going to be hard to win one of those I, uh, as well. So, so Saladin, Constantine, Theodora, Chandragupta, maybe Zenobia. Those are the ones you should really be looking at. The others, 
like these these uh four here um you're either like they're just not that great or you're not going to have a good use for them because other players will be uh much better suited to have them now keep in mind a lot of these commanders you can also get from an event called card king that is an event similar to the wheel of fortune where you spend some amount of gems and you can get some of these sculptures as well however the mightiest governor commanders that show up in card king show up much later than they do their first time on the uh, when they first come unlocked so keep that in mind you can eventually get these commanders uh, without having to fight for it but it's just gonna be much later on so with that out of the way let's take a look at the events because this is a five stage uh, event for mightiest governor now obviously we're looking over here at rise of kingdoms.fandom.com this is a unofficial wiki but lots of great information on here as well so shout out to them um but you can see that there are five stages there's troop training defeating barbarians gathering resources upgrading your power and enemy elimination that usually takes place that's a two-day event what you can see here is that you know which day is going to be the troop training day now what's important is that the the amount of points that you get per unit um, is when you collect the troops meaning you can start training those troops in advance and as long as you collect the troops on that day you'll get the points during that mightiest governor stage so a really good uh, tip that I could give you here is that when you know that you're going to be going for a mightiest governor win then you want to start a massive um training session the like a week before right or, or however many days before in order for it to land on that troop training day the best way to do that is with level five reserves you can train 22,000 troops the next time that you started training so you can queue up four of these ideally now these are pretty hard to come by honestly uh, so you might not have many of these uh, like lying around but if you're a t5 player then you want to train uh start this in advance that way you can um collect the units on that troop training day and that'll give you a nice little buff right you won't have to use all those speed ups for the for the 22,000 troops the next tip i can give you for this is that you want to be upgrading your troops, upgrading troops from tier three to tier four or ideally you want to upgrade your troops from tier four to tier five uh, you get the difference in points so if you go from tier four to tier uh, uh, to tier five you get 60 points right because you didn't train a fresh a fresh batch of t5 um, but you used less speed ups so you definitely get a better return on your investment if you upgrade tier four to tier five because again you're using less speed ups and that's really going to be the uh the bottleneck for you in this event is how many troops can you possibly train in a single day typically you can get resources maybe you have some friends that can send you some or you have them stockpiled or resource items or whatever the case might be but speed ups is really going to be the bottleneck so upgrading your troops is a good way to um still get a ton of points without using as many speed ups and again if you don't have tier five it's going to be really hard to win this this part of the event because um like you just get such a big point advantage here uh that it's probably better to wait until you unlock t5 to really push for a mightiest governor win but you could upgrade tier three to tier four and you save on speed ups in that way as well so this means if you train 2000 t5 troops that you'll get 200,000 points which brings us to the second stage which is defeating barbarians if you defeat a level 5 barbarian you get 3600 points which means you have to kill 56 of that barbarian in order to match a single batch of t5 troops now if you're walking around with five marches that reduces it down to 11 but you also have to invest five times more ap in order to do so and it's just not going to be enough to fight back so what i mean by this is yes killing barbs is a free to play way to give yourself more points and you know if you have the ap and you want to invest that ap during the mightiest governor event maybe you're in a kvk and you can you can get more points from killing higher tier uh, barbarians then sure go ahead and do that but just don't go into into mightiest governor thinking okay i'll train a certain number of troops and then i'll make up for it by killing barbs because it's just not gonna happen like it's it's just not you're gonna run out of ap and you just don't get that many points for barbarians and that's why uh, it's so expensive like monetarily to win a mightiest governor because the free to play ways of getting points right it just it's just not nearly as uh, as dominant as just tr spam training troops gives you 200,000 points for every time you train 2000 tier 5 units that's crazy the day after that is resource gathering now gems obviously give you the most amount of points because they are the hardest to get you could also what's important here uh, is that you can send out gatherers with maximum amounts of siege a couple of days in advance 
from the mightiest governor event and you can send them to different nodes all of gold and you can have five marches out on the field all filled with gold that return to your city on the day of the resource gathering it's important to know though that if you do this let's say you have five gathering out marches all out on the field and you have enough siege to ensure that each of them gathers like a million gold right and you have five marches come back with a million gold each that's about 250,000 points which is slightly more than a single 2000 t5 q so again like even if you prepare days in advance for this specific free to play method it's difficult to fight back against people who are going to be training tons of troops now the good news is that a free to play or low spender can train tons of troops as well but they just have to plan in advance and save all your speed ups and all of your resources to do it all at once whereas pay to win can just spend a lot of money to do it as well so as long as you're strategic you still have a chance it's just you have to be more uh you have to be a, a better planner than them next you have the power upgrade now you get two points per one increase in power um if you are a new account this is where you have a nice advantage because if you have some of these late stage tech upgrades still available you can plan them to be finished or be close to finishing on the power day now level 10 combined arms takes like 110 or 115 days maybe even more than that depending on your tech and your speed ups and helps and everything like that but uh it takes over 100 days right which is crazy but when it finishes you instantly get 2 million 100 000 power now you multiply that by two to calculate the number of points you get for mightiest governor so this is 400 or 4 million 200 000 points for mightiest governor which is substantial right that's a lot of points compared to the other things we've talked about if we compare this to training t5 right because you could technically train tier 5 troops during this period as well 2000 t5 units gives you 40,000 points in this period right so when when you're a t5 late game player you don't have any technology or building upgrades that you can do during this time and so really the end game players go all in on that first stage and just hope that during the power stage there aren't lower uh, power players who just skyrocket in power during that time because if you do that you could probably steal the mightiest governor if you're able to complete a couple of these technologies at the same time but again in order to do that you have to plan in advance you have to plan your tech upgrades in advance to land on that power day but again the good part is that we know already which days these things are going to happen it's not like it's randomly going to happen you know the exact day the final stage is the kill event right and this is where you're not going to want to have your troops out farming and it depends of course it depends on your kingdom some kingdoms have a fixed cap with the amount of points that you can get for the kill event the reason that kingdoms put a cap on this part of the event is because of feeders what is a feeder a feeder is somebody who has a farm account or a bunch of friends who let them kill their troops or wound their troops uh, in exchange for tons and tons of points and you see this in many kingdoms where players have tons of people who feed them kills and they end up winning the mightiest governor or they come in second or whatever and they get a lot of the sculptures and you know typically someone who's getting fed kills isn't going to be the player who's most active on the battlefield when it comes time to win a kvk right if you have to cheese your kills you're probably not gonna be around when when things really hit the fan so a lot of kingdoms have a cap on uh, on this part of the event uh for good reason some kingdoms don't some kingdoms are just free for all do whatever you want and this is a good time to to you know exercise and have some fun right it's fun to just attack players but keep in mind that any time that you're spending resources healing from a kill event that's resources you could have spent during a kvk so I think it's best that this part of the event becomes capped but again it's up to your king this is also a stage where a free to play or low spender probably isn't going to have a solid chance because those big players can just teleport around the map and you know start start attacking you in the open field so really this event is decided by the troop training stage and the power upgrade stage in newer kingdoms in older kingdoms it's mostly decided by the troop training stage now i guess the final note to discuss here is that by knowing the number of days remaining until a governor or until a commander shows up for the mightiest governor events uh, you can plan how many approximately legendary commander sculptures you'll have by that time so if you're vip 10 and you're getting one legendary commander sculpture per day and you save every single one of those 
from the moment that you get VIP 10 until Zenobia, you'll know roughly, okay, this is how many sculptures I'll have by this point. If I don't get them from any other way, just from logging in daily, that's how many you'll have. Um, plus of course, if you're participating in Ark of Osiris and the holiday events, and then there's also the Karak ceremony and more than gems event, there's the recharge rewards event. There's tons of different ways to get legendary commander sculptures. So you could figure out on average, how many legendary commander sculptures do you get per month? And then you can kind of figure out how many months away are we from this commander, right? Theodora, for example. And so that's a good way to know, like, how hard do you have to go during these mightiest governor events? Because again, they are really expensive in terms of either buying bundles or using all of your resources and speed ups all at once. So keep that in mind. Just realize like, okay, by the time they come around, maybe I'll have saved up 400 legendary commander sculptures. So if I've done that, then really all I have to do is win a single mightiest governor and you'll be really close to expertise in that commander. So that's worth keeping in mind. Guys, this was a really long video, but if you found it useful, if you found it informative or helpful in any way, I really would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up on the video. It does help out the channel a ton. And if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video, comment down below any extra tips that you have for the mightiest governor event or any questions that you might have as well. As always, my social media links are in the description below. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, discord, and Twitch. And finally, there's a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms and you'll probably experience fewer crashes than if you're playing on an older phone like i said it's free so go ahead and click that link give it a try you got nothing to lose and honestly i think you'll like it with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace